Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Ron Carley, uh, Charlotte City Manager. I'm joined uh, this afternoon with uh, Dina DiOrio, our County Manager, and Heath Morrison, our School Superintendent, as well as a number of representatives from state and local government departments. Uh, we're expecting some bad weather uh, late this afternoon and this evening. Uh, we expect our roads are going to get fairly treacherous, and we want to give you an update about what all of us are doing uh, to try to ensure the safety of this community. Some key messaging that we want to leave with you is to stay off the roads if you can. Uh, do not park your car on the roads. If you are on the roads and you see our street and snow crews, please give them plenty of room. And this is a snow event, so also try to have a little fun with it too, okay? <laughs> so let me uh, bring up first our county manager, uh, Dina DiOrio. Uh, thank you, Mr. Manager. Just a few points about county services. Um, we are providing a warming station for those homeless individuals that want to get out of the cold. That will be at the Hal Marshall Annex on College Street, and that will be open till at least Wednesday at noon. Um, all county programs scheduled for tonight, including park and recreation, anything at DSS or the health department, have been canceled. Uh, the courts are not going to be closing early today. They will be open to the regular time, and they will make a decision tomorrow regarding opening hours of all court uh, activities. The library will be closing today at 4 p.m. and will resume services sometime tomorrow. And again, they will make that call depending on weather conditions. And in terms of county services, we will not be closing early today. But again, tomorrow we'll be making the decision about opening uh, based on the weather conditions at that time. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Manager DiOrio. Obviously, all of our young people did the snow dance last night. Uh, Superintendent Morrison, uh, how are you reacting to it? Dancing right along with them, right? Um, obviously, it's always very challenging to make these calls, especially when you are predicting weather that has not yet arrived. Uh, but always the most important uh, issue for the Charlotte-Mecklenburg School District is the safety of our students and our staff. Uh, we did make the decision earlier today to do an early release. Uh, we tried to wait until the last possible minute uh, to see if we could, in fact, get a full day in. But again, as the models continue to hold up, uh, we made the decision to do an early release. Uh, we did that about the same time as other school districts in the surrounding uh, area uh, made a similar call. Uh, all evening activities for the Charlotte-Mecklenburg School District have been canceled for this evening, uh, including our 6 o'clock Board of Education meeting. Uh, we will uh, take the agenda items for that meeting and we will uh, distribute them in our next upcoming board meeting uh, on February the 11th and also an upcoming board workshop. Uh, the big question I know is what about tomorrow? And so what we will do is we will uh, have our usual procedures in terms of monitoring the weather conditions. Uh, if the weather predictions hold up and we get the inclement weather uh, that is being predicted, we will try to make a call this evening uh, in consideration of allowing our families and our uh, uh, communities to make all the necessary preparations but again we're going to monitor uh, those decisions uh, we will make a decision no later uh, about what to do tomorrow whether it's a uh, regular school day two hour uh, or late arrival or uh, cancellation no later than 5 uh, a.m. tomorrow but uh, it is our hope and uh, uh, expectation to try to make that call this evening again that will be predicated on uh, weather conditions as they're unfolding throughout the evening Thank you very much. I see a lot of students out there right now doing that snow dance uh, very aggressively for you. you uh, model for them? Uh, no, I will not do that. Uh, so thank you. That's our school superintendent, Heath Morrison. Uh, so let me give you an update from a number of our departments. Obviously, a lot of what we can and cannot do is dependent on what the weather does to our roads. I have uh, Ken Martin from the Charlotte Department of Transportation. Uh, to share with you what we're doing to try to keep the roads open and as safe as possible, but some of the risks and threats that we face. Mr. Martin. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, CDOT Street Maintenance is prepared. All of our equipment is loaded. We are ready to go. Um, our plan um, has been enacted, and uh, we will be on uh, 24 hours a day uh, starting um, now and 7 uh, to 7 p.m., 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. in the morning also and working through the duration of this storm throughout the city. Our guys have their maps and they're ready to go. All of the um, equipment is loaded. So we are prepared. We did start preparing for this storm earlier yesterday as we put salt brine out on bridges and culverts and continued with salt brining today on uh, designated routes throughout the city of Charlotte. Um, so we are ready to go with that. 
we are in a ready mode waiting on the snowflakes to begin to fall. Um, and as the uh, streets begin to moisture on the streets, then we will put out the rock salt, um, which will take care of the routes throughout um, the city. We um, will take care of the major um, uh, and minor thoroughfares, hospital entrances for our priorities, uh, assistance to police, fire, medic, anyone that needs our um, services to help them move around the city. Any emergency calls that we receive, we will also be responding um, to those calls. Um, as um, the city manager said earlier, please when you see our crews out there, give us plenty of room to do the work that we need to do and drive safely. And if you don't need to go anywhere, stay at home. Thank you very much. And we're very pleased to have with us representative from uh, the North Carolina Department of Transportation, a very important partners, a partner of ours, Jen Thompson. Thank you, sir. And uh, NCDOT is having fun with this event as well. If you follow Twitter, look for the hashtag Brian time. We have a lot of interesting pictures that you can uh, post and see what we're doing across our state to get prepared for this storm. Uh, speaking from a statewide perspective, we're very fortunate in this area in that we're not going to see nearly what people east of US-1 and east of I-95 are going to see uh, all the way out to the Outer Banks with 8 to 10 inches of accumulation um, and, and having uh, quite a time trying to get snow cleared out from an ice-covered road. We are prepared as well as uh, Ken said representing the city. The state has been aggressively treating the roads since yesterday morning uh, with the salt brine solution on our bare pavement plan which includes our interstate system, it includes our U.S. and NC routes and our secondary roads. Uh, we have used uh, about 30 trucks and we are ramping up to include even more throughout the night tonight. We use contract trucks to treat our interstate system and we are going to use 63 of them uh, starting immediately. They are staging right now as I speak and we are going to be prepared to take watch over the interstates throughout the night and into tomorrow morning. And then our state trucks, we have about 34 of them, which include our plows and salt spreaders, and they are probably going to start staging around 3 o'clock this afternoon throughout Mecklenburg County. Um, as Ken said, uh, our priority is to keep the roads safe, to keep them open, and to uh, encourage drivers to watch the weather, to plan their uh, commute, and if they have to go into work or go to school or run an errand, try to stagger that if possible tomorrow morning because ice is going to be a big concern for us as well on our road system, bridges and overpasses and culverts, and also um, we want folks to maintain a safe following distance behind our trucks as they're trying to work and do their job as well. Um, we've also been asked to pass along a message from the Department of Emergency Management not to call 911 if you want weather conditions. We don't want people tying up 911 with non-emergencies and so we want to be able to have that open so that real emergencies can be tended to immediately. Um, uh, finally, if you need to get travel information, we can uh, encourage you to use our 511 system, which is um, anything across our state that you need to find out about. We have a Facebook page, several Twitter feeds you can subscribe to to follow. We are posting pictures, posting videos of all our operations, and um, especially we want you to be safe. So just think before you get out on the road and, um, and just plan accordingly. Thank you. So as you can see, our state and local transportation departments have done everything they possibly could do except actually know what they're going to have to respond to. Uh, and so it's going to be a fickle situation depending on how much falls, what it is, and when it falls. And if when it starts falling and it falls a lot and everybody runs out to clear the grocery stores of bread and milk, we're going to clog up the, the, the roads and they can't get out and do their job. Again, we ask people to stay off the road, especially during heavy precipitation conditions, to give our crews an opportunity to get out there and work. And with the roads clear and the rails clear, uh, one of the things we'll be trying very hard to do is to maintain as much transit service as we can. And we're fortunate to have with us Carolyn Flowers, our executive director of our uh, transit services. Ms. Flowers. We also want to ensure that we maintain a safe service for our customers and for the public. And so we'll be monitoring the weather conditions and the road conditions. Um, this evening, uh, right now, we're planning to run our routes as normal. Uh, but as the frozen precipitation starts and continues, um, routes may be delayed. We ask for your patience. And we will be providing up-to-date route and uh, detour information at our website and on our Twitter account. 
Our website is www.ridetransit.org, and our Twitter account is hashtag Cats Ride Transit. Thank you. Uh, the airport is also anticipating delays. They have activated uh, their snow plan. Uh, the main message with regard to uh, people who are planning to fly out or have visitors coming in, check with the airlines before you go to the airport. Uh, we, will ex we do expect delays, not only because of conditions we may have at our, our airport, but the domino effect of conditions at other airports as well. So before you go to the airport to fly or to uh, meet someone, uh, please check with the airlines to see what the conditions are uh, with that uh, flight. Uh, public safety is of uh, obviously the utmost concern. We have Deputy Chief Gallant here from uh, Charlotte-Mecklenburg Police Department. Uh, it's a reading review from uh, a recent snow last year in Charlotte. Uh, they responded to over 130 traffic accidents in a 24-hour period, highlighting once again that if you, go, if you go out, you're putting yourself at risk. Deputy Chief, what other messages do you have? Thank you, Mr. Carley. Um, I want to start off tonight uh, and then tomorrow our watch commanders and our supervisors and our officers are in a great position to, to look at um, the conditions of our streets and they'll be passed out along that information to uh, CDOT to make sure those roads are cleared. Uh, currently we're going to operate under normal conditions, under normal staffing levels. We always have the ability to either shift resources or call additional resources in as needed. Uh, in the event that we see the necessary need for large amounts of coordination between CDOT, City Fire, other agencies within the city, uh, we'll make a decision to open up our command center. And again, I, I always, we always ask that during these type of events that people obviously increase their following distance, the same, same things you've heard already. Um, try to commute. If, you, if you're going to commute, try to carpool. Um, of course, reduce your speed. You know, all those things are going to help. Come in later to work if you can or, or run your errands. Uh, also like to add, too, that um, we ask the community during this time, use 311 when necessary if it's a non-emergency. Uh, of course, if it's an emergency, please use 911 and let's get us out to the scene so we can get the uh, areas cleared and get people to safety. So thank you very much. Thank you, Deputy Chief. Uh, unfortunately, in the past week, we've been seeing an increase in the number of fires, many of which are preventable. Uh, really, we really need people to be safe, not only on the street, but at home. Uh, we have our fire chief, John Hannon, here. Could you uh, share some thoughts with the crowd? Yes, sir. Thank you. I want to remind everyone, <clears throat> makeshift heating devices uh, can be fatal. If you lose power, don't bring anything in your home that, that, that uses propane, gasoline, diesel fuel, charcoal, inside the house, in the garage, in the crawl space. They're, they're, it's not just that they're a terrible fire hazard. They're all big producers of carbon monoxide, which is fatal. Uh, so just avoid those and as it's been said a few times try to stay home if you can thank you finally uh, with regard to solid waste services uh, we expect that all of our services will be able to complete collections today uh, with regard to what uh, will happen tomorrow we'll have to wait and see what the conditions on the roads are uh, we would hope to at least be able to do trash collection a uh, bulk of brush collection uh, could be questionable uh, but please uh, check our website. The good thing is uh, what we've heard thus far from uh, Duke Energy is we're not expecting widespread power outages, so people should be able to uh, check, check the websites, uh, monitor social media, uh, hashtag CLTWX is one that we're using, as well as a couple of others. Uh, we have emergency.charmec.org, and if you've not signed up for uh, Charmec Alerts, uh, we encourage you to do that if there are any uh, emerging uh, emergency conditions that people uh, may need to know about. Uh, at this time, be happy to open up the floor to questions to any of the people that are here. Yes, ma'am. For um, CMS, for a lot of parents are wondering, why did it take so long for the cancellations to come through? I remember uh, Richard Van Root, former mayor here, once said, I have the hardest job in the uh, city and county. I don't know if I completely agree with that all the time, but I will tell you when it comes to having to decide to close, to delay, uh, to early release, it is a very challenging uh, uh, decision to make. And it, uh, you have a situation of students having to go uh, back to homes where there may not be uh, somebody to pick them up and, and take care of them. And so you're, we always want to try to keep our students in school learning. 
while everybody loves to have a snow day, uh, everybody loves it until you have to make it up. So we, we monitor the situations. What was very challenging about this decision is obviously uh, we're making a decision prior to actually having any of the inclement weather happen. Uh, throughout the course of the morning, we were monitoring the projections that the precipitation was going to start as early as noon. As those models kept on moving back, uh, we thought we would be able to get any full day. Uh, as the models started to show that the precipitation would hit around 3, uh, 30 to 4 o'clock, we knew that our schools to get out later would not be able to complete their runs prior to heavy precipitation. So we made the call as late as we felt we could reasonably make it. Uh, but uh, always keeping the safety of our students and staff members in mind. Uh, we made the call about the same time as other surrounding school districts did. We were in collaboration and communication with them. Uh, so we made the call a little earlier than some school districts, a little later than others. Uh, but we were all about the same time. So I, I wish I could say we're always going to hit it just right. Uh, but when you're making these decisions prior to the actual inclement weather occurring, it becomes problematic. So uh, again, we've got great people. Uh, and I also want to cite the collaboration communication between the city and the county. Uh, it has uh, been fantastic to have these partners, all of us, communicating together. We've been communicating all morning about uh, how we're going to do these uh, decisions. Uh, so again, that's the best answer I can give you is uh, in absence of the inclement weather, uh, we try to make the decision as late as possible, but with the safety of our students and staff in mind. Other questions? So, I guess, so what happens tomorrow, I guess, do you still have staff out there monitoring the roads and when do you anticipate to make the call tomorrow morning? Yeah, absolutely. So we will have uh, staff out there the entire evening uh, throughout the morning. Uh, as soon as we feel we can make a reasonably uh, uh, judicious decision in terms of we can anticipate what the weather conditions are going to be for students in the morning, uh, we'll make that call. I would like uh, to try to make that decision this evening in consideration of our family members who are going to have to make alternative arrangements for uh, student safety and uh, supervision. Uh, but clearly, if the conditions change overnight, uh, we'll have to monitor that. So we will have uh, crews out, staff out. We'll be in collaboration, communication with the city and county. And then, uh, again, we'll make a decision as early as we can, but uh, no later than 5 a.m. Any other questions? Uh, so the county manager and I agree that you do have the hardest job. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'd like to say one more question. I know this is nothing new for Charlotte, you know, runs and runs and things like that. So I want to know, uh, has the city or anyone tried anything different this year from lessons learned that we need to do these or they? I just want to know, has there anything been changed as we go into this winter uh, alert in years past? Yeah, the most important thing I think that we're doing is really to learn from our lessons uh, of the past and bring together what has happened and really look at it, make sure that we are as ahead of the curve as we can. And so as the superintendent said, we're guessing. Uh, but we're guessing early and trying to put as much in place as possible. And I would say the other thing that we're trying really hard to do is very tight coordination. It's making sure that the right hand and the left hand knows exactly what's going on. We had a large conference call earlier this afternoon. Uh, we're going to try to, prevent, to present uh, a unified front to our public and pull all of our public resources against all of our public agencies together to provide the best services that we possibly can. So thank you very much for coming. We'll have additional updates as we know more. Uh, we will be briefing, I will be briefing uh, the mayor and I expect that he'll be available uh, to answer inquiries from you uh, later in the afternoon. Special thanks to the county manager and our school superintendent for being here, uh, for our state representative uh, and all of our uh, agency personnel. Uh, be safe and have fun. Thank you very much.